Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Um, something I felt like doing purely out of curiosity. I went on Google and typed down weightlifting, uh, weightlifting myths. Just something I something I did on a whim. Um, as one who's been uh, lifting weights here for, or uh, lifting weights off and on for a few months now, this is something I could probably relate to. Um, I'm just, you know, and I've been. Spend, you know, spending that time here looking at other websites. Um, Athleanx.com. Um, I forget his name, but he—I forget his name, but he's another bodybuilder. He looks like a—he looks like a damn Viking. He looks kind of like, kind of like tall, blonde, massive blonde beard. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Watched his. Um, there is another one. I forgot his name too, but basically. Basically, I'm from uh, what from watching other bodybuilding channels. I'm um, doing a little bit of reading here and there, just soaking up what I can about it. You know, so I just thought I'd go. Thought I'd just out of curiosity. I did like a few, like I said a few moments ago. I thought I'd go ahead and Google weightlifting myths, see if I can relate to any of these. But like I usually do on all these videos, just gonna go on down the line and comment on them. But I'm not, not really calling them out or anything. But, but, you, so, but, a lot of times this here can inspire me on to other stuff too. Gets my gears working. Um, I guess I should have checked to see if my mic was actually working first. Okay, it is. Bye. All right. Myth number one: lifting weights will make you bulk up. Uh Oh wait, this uh I think I picked the wrong one here. I think this one here is uh meant for women. Yeah. Um Okay um, the sexist as it might sound, I'm gonna go ahead and um I'm gonna find another one. Octane fix six pack bags, open fit. Best women workouts reviews. How about? Oh, here's one. Huffington Post. Okay, let me let me check and check. Let me check and make sure that my uh my webcam here isn't covered. Okay. Thirteen weight training myths we need to stop believing. Okay, where are they? Well, that's got off to a bad start. No, I don't want to subscribe to the newsletter. Okay, um... Myth number one, more exercise is always better. That is absolutely false. And I am living proof of that. Because I, um, as well as while lifting weights, I work out, I work at a job where I already do a lot of lifting. Like just picking up, picking up cases, stocking them, um, you know, grabbing this case over here, picking it up, setting it over here, uh, you know, like reaching over, grabbing this case, moving it over here, and, and doing this repetitiously too doing this many many times throughout the night so I I dare my job is dare I say athletic because I do a lot of bending down bending up and a lot of bodily movements and, and a lot of repetitive motion too that 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 has to be said too so so when I'm when I totally when I totally say this is a myth that I, I, I can back this there's been times where I've uh, I've lifted weights and then got into work the next night I am all kinds of tore up after the day is over. Just, lot, just lots of ow, lots of ouchies and owies on my joints, especially my um, my my um, elbow, my shoulder, um, shoulder, the front of my shoulder, the front of my chest. I mean, they're all pretty, they're all they're all pretty uh, torqued and they're all pretty well hurting by the end of the day because of me working out the the morning before. So no. 
more exercise is not always better is not always better you got to work smarter not harder especially when you're in the position i'm in yes yes i totally agree with this you don't want to overdo it again especially with the kind of job the kind of job i have now if you work at an office where you just sit behind a desk i mean it's you you definitely don't want to go overboard but it, it's it but doing so it's less of an issue because you're just going to go back to a job where you're going to sit behind a desk you ain't going to do the kind of work that i do you know pushing pulling and all that other stuff but let me go on to the next myth uh no from what little i understand of cardio all that does is it improves your cardiovascular performance. Just oxygen usage. But um, in actuality, um, weightlifting is actually, from what I understand of it, better than cardio. But again, it depends on what you're going for. I mean, if you're doing something like, like boxing, MMA, um, sports where you act, where endurance is a big time factor, then yeah, you're going to want some cardio. You're going to want to you're going to want to learn cardio. But if you're talking like weight loss slash fat burning, etc., weightlifting is the way to go. Reason being, muscle is, it's, um, it's an old saying called muscle is metabolism. The more muscle you have, the more, the more calories, the more protein, the more carbs, um, to a lesser extent, the more fat you have to consume in order to maintain all that muscle. So... So that would, I mean, it, I don't think um, weight training directly causes weight loss. But it, basically what it does is, uh, is it ups your metabolic rate. More muscle, mean, more muscle means a higher metabolism. You have to consume more, you have to consume more food. Or just to distill it all down to a word, you have to consume more food in order to maintain all that muscle you got. So, it, it, there is going to come to a point where you have to eat more to maintain it all. Um, I forget his name. He's one of the most famous um, world's strongest man competitors. But he has like a 40,000 calorie a day diet because of how massive he is. He has to consume 40K calories just to maintain all that bulk he's got. So that that he's proof positive right there. So as far as that goes, yes, you're lift it's actually the opposite. Lifting is better than cardio. Strength training program can boost your metabolism and help burn off more fat. Um again, I don't I'm sorry if I'm not Sorry if I'm not saying this right, but um, weightlifting doesn't directly cause you to lose fat. It, what it does do is it ups your metabolism, which your body starts taking in more nutrients and you know protein, carbs, and fat, and all that. Try to try to help try to help build and repair, or try to re I got their order wrong. Try to help repair and then build that muscle tissue. That's that's how it works. By increasing the, your resting or metabolic rate. I just said that. Muscle is metabolism. No. Activated contracting muscles are the body's furnace. Excessive cardio and dieting can eat muscle tissue away, compromising this furnace. Yep. This is pretty common right here. That women think if they lift, they will look like men. I mean, uh, actually, two words come to mind: Linda Hamilton. Ever seen uh, off the movie Terminator Two? She did it. She did a whole metric ton of working out. I mean, hell, in the movie itself, she's sitting there doing pull. 
she's sitting there doing pull-ups and stuff. I think she was probably doing other exercises as well, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head. <coughs> but no, it, it, women won't turn into she-hulks. They'll just, they'll just look like Linda Hamilton. They're all, they're all just well-defined and stuff. Women who weightlift won't look like men. They do not have the hormonal support to pile on a significant amount of muscle mass. Um, there are female bodybuilders out there, though, and I believe steroids is a big reason why, why they look like that. Um, um, yes and no. I, again, it, again, the more, the more muscle you have, the more, the more you have to consume in order to maintain all that muscle. Eventually, when you're first starting out, when you're, when you're like a 90 year, when you're like a 90 pound weakling or something like that, then no, you're not gonna need a, you're not gonna need supplements because you, you don't have that much muscle, so you don't have that much you have to keep up. There's not much upkeep required. But when you get to a position where I'm in, no, I'm not, I'm not a full big bulky Arnold Schwarzenegger body builder or anything like that. But when you start getting into my position where you know you're starting to get pretty much, you're starting to get, you know, you're starting to get some muscle, then yeah, you're gonna have. In my case, I drink protein shakes. Um, I have protein powder, but I only use it maybe, maybe one scoopful, one or two scoopfuls a day. Um, I eat a lot of beans. You know, there's a lot of protein in that. Um, I think, um, I ate a fair amount of peanut butter and crackers. Peanut butter has protein in it. Um, there's, there's probably other foods I eat as well that also have protein in it. So, but there's going to come a point where... You're gonna, you're gonna be, in order to advance to the next level to get even more muscular, you're gonna have to consume supplements, supplements, supplements. Excuse me. You know, cause I, it wouldn't be very feasible for you to just sit here and just pick out more and more and more on food. So, that's where uh, protein shakes and protein powder is gonna have to come in. But again, if you're skinny, if you're a skinny guy that's working out, you're not gonna need. Because there's not that much muscle for you to have to maintain slash build up. I kind of agree with this too. That's all dollars and no cents right there. We live in a very money-based culture. So, so much so that we often place the almighty dollar above health. Again, that's all dollars and no cents get out of this mindset at least regarding exercise um instead focus on consistency intensity and safety when it comes to lifting okay um okay I think we might be talking about two totally different things here you need to buy a product that I'm I was reading this as um as supplements, not not in general, like machines and stuff. Machines often compromise the intensity required for the body you desire. Um, especially in my case, they're probably going to talk about this later, so I'll leave it. I'll leave it that. Nope. I don't. I know next to nothing about CrossFit, but it goes back to the first myth that I said. I also work at a job where I do a lot of lifting. I'm pretty, I'm pretty athletic, for lack of a better word, to begin with. So, doing something like CrossFit's going to be overkill for me. Doing, doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger Iron Man workout is going to be way too much for me. So, so I have to, I have to be very judicious about when and how I do my do my weightlifting. So, this, this is definitely a myth right here. This most certainly wouldn't work for me. Okay, CrossFit, for example, encourages ballistic movements. This is dangerous. 
you better know what you're doing. Or at the very least, you better know what you're doing. Because ballistic, explosive type movements, I mean, if you're not using perfect form, you can really set yourself up for injury. Again, I'm, 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 that's backed by my experience. I've, I've done what I've, in fact, I remember now, when I first started, when I first started out lifting weights, I was doing, doing just that, just, just doing like power, you know, power explosive, explosive movements that was actually hurting me. Or, hell, hell, doing that at my job, doing this kind of thing at my job also set me up for injury. I mean, I pulled my cap, I torn my calf muscle. I think I'll probably, I think I'm, now that I think about it, I think I've torn both of my calf muscles. Um, I've hurt my, hurt muscles in my lower back numerous times because of me just, uh, just doing yanking motions. Um, the middle of my upper back, that's the most recent one. That came from, that also came from me just doing uh, lots of, lots of hard yanking maneuvers. Like, when, uh, yanking pallets and pulling pallet jacks and whatnot. Just, uh, just trying to power, just trying to power them through. That's, that's why I can't, I have to, I have to pull carefully now because I don't want to hurt my, uh, middle upper back again but that to me would constitute a ballistic movement so moving right along um in general no but again if again in my situation it can because again I work a job where I already do a lot of lifting in my case yes it can there's been many times like I said at the start of this video I would uh I would make the mistake of getting a workout in and then going to work the next night, and end up uh by the time I get home it's like my oh it's like my elbows are hurting um surprisingly my wrists don't hurt but the area like right right around here and here where the forearm muscle starts those also hurt um the front of my shoulders would hurt like crazy um but the middle of my back I mean it. You know, I'm pretty much a hurting unit by the time I get home. So, in my case, it can. But in most everybody else's cases, especially when you have a sedentary lifestyle slash work behind a desk, I highly doubt it. If anything, it would probably strengthen it. So, lubricant effects on the joints and increase the production of synovial. Okay, yeah, so he said the same thing. If anything, it could actually improve your joints. Especially like the tendons and stuff. Nope. Nope. I've known this for years. Sit-ups are the best way to get the best abs? Nope. A good diet is the best way to get the best abs. You can... I mean, you can ab train like a motherfucker, but if you're, if you're still picking on on food and if you still got to... Still got a dicky dude that hangs way the hell out here. Ain't gonna matter much. You ain't gonna have no six pack. The only thing you're gonna, I mean, you can't have a, you know, well, how did it go? You can't have a six pack when your body's wearing a three liter bottle. So. And he said the same thing too. Um, the guy on Athlean X, he said the same thing. You cannot, you can't out train a bad diet. You can't outrun a bad diet. He's, but again, that was, this was something that I learned many years ago, back when I was just picking out on poop. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you couldn't see my abs for shit. Not when I had a big old, big old gut that just hung over my pants. So, nope. This goes back to the first myth. Cardio doesn't build muscle, and muscle is metabolism. And I guess um, this kind of coincides with the last myth. Um, no, a good diet is the best way to burn fat, as well as weightlifting. Burn fat at accelerated rate. Yep. Again, the more muscle you have, the more you have to consume, the more you have to consume in order to maintain all that muscle. Nope. 
Nope, absolutely not. Again, this is backed by my own experience. Squats and deadlifts, done properly, are actually good for your back. They strengthen your back muscles. Then in it's in a, at my job, this is probably one of my one of my most common lifts here at my job. I do a lot of I do a lot of squatting, like grabbing heavy cases. <clears throat> You know, I'm squatting down to move this cab, this heavy case over here, and you know, or reaching over here and grabbing this big old case of uh, big old case of cake frosting, having a oh, Jesus Christ, having a. I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but having to reach down and grab a big heavy case of like cake frosting. You know, I'm basically squatting it up. And then moving it over here. Deadlifts. I do a ton of them at my job. You know, having to reach down for something that's real big and heavy lower. You know, that's way lower than me. Picking it up, carrying it over here, and setting it down there. That kind of thing. That We do that constantly. Because of that, I'm a lot strong. My back is actually a lot stronger because of it. But again, that's only one done properly. And there has been many times in my career where I've done some improper lifting. I mean, my job is a fast-paced, high-stress job. So you don't have, you know, you're in a hurry to get the job done. You don't have time to sit here and exercise proper form and make sure, you know, you get the weight close to you and all that. It just, it take, eats up too much time, so. But no, again done properly, they're actually good for your back. Yep, yep. He said the same thing. By stressing the lumbar extensor muscles, bolster the integrity and strengthen the lower back. Yep. Nope. But it... protein diets are bad nope but again it kind of com it comes down to how much muscle you have to begin with um high protein can be overkill again if you're like a skinny 90 pound 90 pound weakling you ain't gonna need to you ain't gonna need to consume 40,000 calories a day like the world's strongest man does but um you are gonna need you are gonna need to eat enough protein though to allow for muscle growth because that's what your body uses to build and repair muscle tissue protein kidneys fail if you eat five or six chicken breasts daily and stay hydrated um last I heard I only saw one entry of this in all the um, all the articles and videos that I've looked at but you need to consume at least one gram of protein equal to the amount equal to the amount of body weight you have like me I weigh I weigh between 150 to 155 so that would mean I'd have to eat I'd have to have like 150 grams of protein a day I but again I only found one entry of that I don't I haven't really seen any other any other entries that say otherwise but in my case that would mean I'd have to I would have to drink at least four protein shakes a day but another thing that uh, I don't know if they're going to talk about here in this in this article is uh, protein is also cal protein contains calories. I don't know what the ratio is of calorie to protein, like one protein is equal to X calories. I don't know the ratio there, but protein contains calories, and if you consume too much protein, you'll end up gaining weight. You'll or you'll end up gaining dead weight, I should say. Talk to your doctor or nutritionist for a meal plan that adds a variety of healthy foods, including proteins to your diet. Oh, okay. There's a variation on this. Okay, checking my OBS. Okay, the mic still works. 
having an apple before bed. Now, um, it's it was pretty commonly known that um, consuming a protein shake just before bed is actually good for you, cause um, sleep, I believe, is when your body really does its uh build, building and repairing of muscle tissue. So if you drink a protein shake just before you go to bed, that's actually that's actually helpful. Because it gives your body something to work with while it's sleeping. While it's doing its uh, building and repairing thing. If your goal is... But yeah, um, avoiding sugary fruit. Yeah, I could probably see that. I could probably see that. But again, but again, from what I understand, uh, consuming a protein shake just before bed is actually a good thing. Nope. Um. This is along the same lines as why um. Rugby, the sport rugby, is actually one of the safest sports out there because they don't use pads. They don't use any ma any kind of major protective equipment. The most they might wear is uh maybe like some some like small fluffy shoulder pads and a and a padded helmet. But the only reason why they really wear the helmet, or the only ones that really wear them, um, it, it would take a while to explain how the positions work in rugby, but uh, a lot of the, the players that wear them often wear them to keep their ears from being chafed, or to keep their head from being from being gashed and scratched open and stuff. That's why they wear them. But I think uh, players only in certain positions wear them because they're the ones that are going to have their... Again, they're going to have their heads wedged in between other players and stuff. So they'll want to wear the mist to, they'll want to wear the helmets to protect their ears. Ears and the, their scalps. But uh, cause a weight belt is no substitute for proper form. So, I mean, if anything, a weight belt could be a crutch. I guess another way of looking at it, if you need to wear a weight belt a weight belt's not going to help you. But again, this was, um, this is something that, this is actually something now that I think about it. This goes way back to probably my very first grocery store job where I was uh, doing a lot of lifting. A lot of them, a lot of us stockers are saying the same thing. And managers too. A weight, if anything, a weight belt is actually bad for you. You need to learn to lift properly first. If, if you have to wear one, Learn to lift properly first, and then before wearing one. But if you already know how to lift properly, a weight belt's kind of pointless then. He's saying the same thing here too. Deadlifts and squats stimulate the lumbar extensor muscles as the torso is maintained upright during the movements, forcing them to grow stronger and thereby bolstering the integrity of the midsection as a whole. But again, it, it's there. I see a parallel here see a parallel between here and rugby it's believe it or not rugby is actually one of the safer sports be, because there are no there's no uh, football equipment involved you have to learn to tackle properly you have to learn to run properly you have to learn you have to learn to move around properly and stuff you can't rely on heavy ass equipment to protect you whereas in football injuries happen like like a lot like because most most of those collisions you see Bam! Or big ol' hits. I mean, part of it's the way the rules are written, too. The, they're mainly because of fourth and inches type plays that probably hap that are happen fairly often. You know, you can't give the players that extra inch, so you can't... I think proper tackling pretty much goes out the window at, that, at those times. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of rambling on right now. So I'll go to the last myth. Nope. Nope. Um. I'm definitely saying no. I don't quite have the words for it right now. It's an endurance activity. It doesn't simulate your body like strength training does. But I think um, weightlifting. Weightlifting actually can improve your running, though. You know, because you can generate 
if you if your legs are more muscular you can generate more power in your legs and you can run faster um, as far as endurance goes um, I yeah I guess um uh, running well here let me like I said I don't quite have the words up here yet Running is an endurance activity that doesn't that doesn't stimulate your body like okay I see I see I see that's okay Osborne nailed it that running is an endurance activity not a weightlifting activity it's apples and oranges but like I said a few moments ago though I think uh strength training uh could could kind of improve your running because again if you're if your legs are stronger you can generate more power with your legs you can run faster um if you're I, if um if how soon you get to the destination doesn't matter then it doesn't matter which then it doesn't matter which train you're riding. you can take you can take the fast ass express train you know, just, yeah, like I said, I'll, 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 I'll stop there. It, I don't quite have it, have it nailed down in my mind yet, but, but I'll, but yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and I'll just kill the video right here. Cause otherwise I'm just going to sit here and just keep going. So, so I'll just, I'll just go ahead and cut it off here, but this is just something I wanted to do. Um, figured it'd be a kind of a cool thing to just make a make a video about this so but otherwise that'll do it for me so thanks for watching everybody and see y'all next time